<laughs> I don't mind. So this, this little talk was put together because we were talking about the Campbells and how they came to this area and how um, they developed in Argyll. Basically they came here in the 1200s to Argyll. They came from the mid and the central belt of Scotland. Um, their DNA shows that they're just average ancient Britain type Celtic peoples who lived in Scotland for thousands of years and the chief came here and he married in La Fosside to the heiress of a, a small clan that lived in La Fosside over the hills there and um, the 1200s have settled in Lothar uh, they immediately fell out with their neighbours um, the chief that we know is called, is called Big Colin Alan Moore and Gallant and he fell out with the McDougals who are then the lords of Argyll and he caused a little dispute and eventually he was killed in battle against the McDougals in 1296. Um, so the, the, they, they had that sort of feeling that they were they were on the losing side but very soon they joined with Robert the Bruce who was the King of Scotland or he, was, he wasn't the King then but he was trying to become King of Scotland and eventually they were on the winning side. First of all they felt they had another battle with the McDougals and they lost over at Tyndrum which is over the hills there and um, after that they were, they were destitute. That was Colin, Colin Moore's son Neil who was the chief of the clan at the time and he joined Robert the Bruce and eventually they became successful. Robert the Bruce became king, claimed his kingdom back to Scotland and Neil Campbell as he was, so Neil Campbell he benefited from that and he acquired estates in Argyll, including a castle on an island in Loch Awe called Inchconnell Castle, which is now a ruin, and that's where they lived for a couple of hundred years. It was, it was Neil's son, also called Colin, Colin Og, young Colin, who fought at Bannockburn with Robert the Bruce, and after the success of that, the independence of Scotland again in 1314, um, he got more estates and more property in, in Argyll. He did very well. In fact, the chiefs were all funny names like Colin. The next Colin was Colin Yangantak in Gaelic, which is wonderful Colin. And another chief was called Duncan and I, which is um, Duncan the Fortunate. Not like me, Duncan, uh, just Duncan the Unfortunate. But Duncan the Fortunate, he became the first Lord Campbell in the 1440s. And it was him who decided to move from Loch Side to Inverera and he built the first castle here in the 1440s and the castle was over to the front of the castle as it is today um, if you look at the, if you go down to the uh, car park at the castle and you look across towards the river you'll see white posts stuck in the, in the, in the field four white posts stuck in the field and that's the corners of the original castle in Inverera in the 1440s um, when they came here the two main clans that were here were the McVickers who lived up that way in Glenera and the McKeevers who lived over there in what's called Strongshira. And the borders, the border of the two lands is a standing stone. As you're coming up here today on the field on your left hand side, there's a big standing stone and that was the border stone between the McVickers and the McKeevers. The Campbells moved in, they had rights to the property and they became very successful here. So that was Duncan Lord Campbell. And there were two Lord Campbells, and then very quickly they became Earls. There were ten Earls of Argyll, and there's now been thirteen Dukes of Argyll since then. Okay. So in the, in the 16th century, 1567, one of the Earls, who was the fifth Earl after Lord Campbell, he married his sister of Queen Mary, or Mary Queen of Scots, as it's commonly known. So her name was Lady Jean Campbell. She was a countess of Argyll, and 1567 in July, Queen of Scots, Queen of Scots came here. So she was a Campbell? No, no. Her okay. sister, her sister was married to the Earl of Argyll. She was a Campbell. Okay. Okay. And she came here in July 1567, and she visited her sister at the old castle down there. Uh, it's recorded that she came here. They had a Highland Games for her. You read the Highland Games program every year, it says the first Highland Games were held in 1567, which isn't certainly true because there wasn't another one until the 1890. That's when the current Highland Games started in 1890. So when Mary came here, they took her up Glen Shearer, uh, yeah. up Glen there, and they had a, what they call an Ellery. There's a, house, there's a place called Ellery up there today. An Ellery was a was a, a wooden fencing enclosure where they had a deer forest up there, so they kept the deer and they, and they went hunting. But it wasn't quite hunting like you see in the films with 
Henry VIII riding along. So what he used to do in the hunting time was he'd get the, the forester and his men, he'd go up the hill, chase the deer down the glen, they would be chased into the scullery, this funnel of food, and then they would come right down and when it was very narrow and they were all in, the, the, the lairds would go and they would fire in their bows and arrows and struck their um, crossbows into the, the deer as they went by and killed them. So Mary Queen of Scots was recorded as having killed a deer, killed a stag at the elderly. Also recorded is um, that she came down, she liked it because it's, it's quite an open, Glencairn is quite an open property, it's beautiful fields, and uh, she came down and she went to have remarked, Kel Beauchamp, which has got beautiful fields, and there's a gate there today, and a cottage at the Glencairn, at the entrance of the Glencairn, called the Beauchamp Gate and the Beauchamp Cottage, and that's supposed to be because Mary Queen of Scots called um, this field, Kel Beauchamp. It's called, still called Beauchamp to, to the end of the day. Um, in, the, in the next century, the Earl of Argyll became the Marcus of Argyll, the 8th Earl, and he was a Covenanter. So that meant he sided with, with Oliver Cromwell against the monarchy. And but when, when Cromwell died and the monarch came back, King, James, King Charles II came back, he sided with the wrong side. The Earl was summoned, the Marcus was summoned to Edinburgh, he was taken to London, he head shot on. So, we were in a wee bit of that. That was when they were in the losing times to Clan Campbell. Um, but um, his son became a ninth Earl, got some of the property back, but he decided to back the wrong side as well. So, King Charles II died, and King James came on, he was a Roman Catholic, and uh, the Campbells were very anti Roman Catholic. And when there was a, a one mouth rebellion, the Duke of Monmouth, the illegitimate son of uh, King James, rose against them. Um, the, the Campbells rose with him, and what happened was, uh, once again, they lost. The Campbells took off, and there's a, you, may have, you all know this stone, when you cross the bridge, you enter in Shinnan. Before you get to the Normandy Hotel, there's a little, uh, a little sign that says the Argyle Stone. Alright, okay. no one ever heard of it. Alright, well the next time you pass over that bridge, we'll just check the next route. Yeah. Down, by, down by the side of the Normandy Hotel, there's a little so iron come, come in, a little iron enclosure, and in there there's a stone. Right. And that was the stone the ninth Earl was sitting on when he was captured. Oh, really? Up a rebellion in Argyle, he managed to go all the way across into Red Drive. It's very close to us. Very close to very limited, okay? And sitting in that stone, so he was captured and he was then taken away to Edinburgh. He got his head chopped off as well. Okay, and that was very unfortunate for this oh, like, particular like my head, okay, so. This was very unfortunate for this particular village because after that we, what they had was rights of fire and sword. So the winning side under the Marquis of Atle at that time, he came down and he raided it in with Argyle, killed a lot of people, took away all the cattle and burned in the river to the ground. Okay. He took all the, the lairds of the Clan Campbell, 17 of them in total, and down opposite where the Joss Hotel is today, there's the Bank of Scotland next to the jail. Well in that garden there was a big tree, because in Barrera it wasn't there at the time, it was just a little headland on the wall. And on that tree they hanged all 17 Campbell lairds. So that was all the time was it? Yeah. A friendly, a friendly time. A very friendly time. And, and, and at that time, was the, after that, a couple of generations later, they erected a monument there, with a big ball on the top. And it was in that garden when I was a boy. But 20 or 30 years ago, it became unsafe. The ball fell off the top and they killed someone. So they decided to take the monument away. And if you actually walk up past the castle now, up the glen a wee bit, just over there, there's the monument's been re erected and a little bit of ground near the other bridge. Corridor 17. Yes, sir. yeah. And the, and the people who were hanged in the garden of the Bank of Scotland because of the Arab time. Okay, so in 1685 that was, the Campbells were on a down there again, but a few years later, glorious revolution in 1688, William and Mary came to the throne. Protestant monarchy, Catholics were deposed, James was sent away to work and live in Holland, the Jacobites came from that sort of thing. And what happened was after William and Mary came back, the Duke was promoted, he became the tenth Duke, his son, son of the one who had his head cut off, and he became the first Duke and they've done really, really well ever since. The first Duke of Argyll was fundamental in getting the union of the parliaments of Scotland and England in 1707. He got more power and prestige out of that. Uh, his sons were 
uh, with John, the field, field marshal John Campbell, who was the second Duke, who died in 1743. And then there was Archibald, who was the Earl of Isla, who succeeded. And if you've got any Royal Bank of Scotland banknotes in your pocket, uh, his picture, no, no. His picture is on the, every Royal <laughs> Bank of Scotland banknote, the Earl of Isla, because he was, uh, he was uh, one of the founders of the Royal Bank of Scotland. Please do. Oh, sorry, all right. Uh, so, that's all I've got. In 1743, uh, he became uh, the third Duke of Argyll. And he decided this, he, was, he spent a lot of his time away because his brother had been the second Duke. And he decided, I don't want to go and live in that rotten old castle there, falling down in Inverera. I want to rot the castle down and build a new castle. So, in the 1740s, he decided that's when he started get plans for this place here. All the, all the top architects of the day in Scotland and in England to make designs for the new castle. So when he designed this castle here, he found the turrets, they were added on later on, the little conical turrets there, they were there in the 19th century. And the castle, as you see, was basically designed by him. And the problem with that is, it was nearer the old village. The old village of Inverera was actually where the garden is today. So all the way up down that road, from the road end to the castle, was where the village of Inverera was. Where the village is today, there was nothing there, just a little promontory where that tree was when they got there behind. So he said, well, I'm going to build my new castle here, I'm going to knock the old one down. Now that village is far too close to my castle, so I'll have to move. So in 1746, he issued a summons of removal, 146 people, families living in Inverera, were told to get out. Right. And included in them were my great 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 grandfather, James Buchanan. He was a blacksmith in Inverera. He was one of the ones who was summoned to get out to the move. So I've, I've subsequently traced his ancestry because he moved further down the lot, and that's why I've come to work on this area today. That's where he moved down to. Okay. Uh, so the 147 people didn't move immediately. It took a wee while to get rid of them all, but they progressively moved everyone either out of the area altogether or into what they called the new town of Inverera. And where you are today, all that land where Inverera is built has been reclaimed from the sea. That's why some of the old tenement buildings are called relief land. Uh, on the other side of the church is called relief land. It was all built into the sea. The beer was built into the sea, and the whole new town was built there. The best of the tenants from the old town were allowed to move into the new town. But the ones who weren't all that good, including my great 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 grandfather, had to go somewhere else. I don't know why he wasn't very good. I don't know. So, um, so they progressively moved everyone out, and as you see today, the whole village, the whole town has been completely removed. You can't see any sign of it. The only sign you can see is one of the last people to move out, and he was supposed to be called McCorkadil. But he, the name McCorkadil doesn't appear in the 147 names that are listed in the village. He was supposed to be the last tenant. He was so angry at having to move that he took a pot in a pan and when they were building the wall, as you go out of Inverary and towards the bridge, there's a wall along the side of the road. And he was so angry when he went to the masons of the wall, he took a pot in a pan out of his house and he got him to cement them into the wall. Okay? So that, that was his protest of having to um, and it's still there? Can you well, see that? Yeah, well, you can, but what happened was in the Second World War, some North American visitor who was here, because there was a lot of military here during the war, doing the training, a lot of Canadians, but the story was of an American, I have to say. He actually was a drunken escapade one night, the pan went missing. Someone wrenched the pan off the wall and took it home as a souvenir. Aww. So when I was a boy, all you could see was the pot. The pot was still <laughs> was cemented into the wall. But 20 or 30 years ago, a lot of people who are more interested in history than there are now around the area, they said to the last two residue father, this isn't right, that pot fan story. But he actually got a big frying pan and he had a big ceremony and he cemented a new pan into the wall. So if you're walking along the, the main road between the Dergail Hotel and the bridge, walk along that main road, you look at the wall, you see a pot of pan cemented into the wall, still to the wall. Sure yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure sober up, we'll check that <laughs> <laughs> If the rain goes off, you can go and see that. Yeah. Um, so basically that's all I've got to say about the Gail Campbell. So yeah. Oh, oh.
Yeah. That must be something telling me it's time to stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so they moved from from Lavaux. You see another big castle in Lavaux side killed called it's called locally killed Churn Castle. It's actually pronounced to be Kyle Thurn Castle. Um, that's that was built much later by a branch of the Campbells called the Campbells of Glenorchy. Um, Duncan, the fox that I was talking about, uh, his younger son called Colin got the estates, former uh, MacGregor estates from Glenorchy, and he built that castle in the court also in the court. So it's about the same period of time. It was later expanded to become a barracks, so two thirds of it is actually a barracks area, but the actual castle tower is still uh, very well. So that's all I can really say. Any questions? That's really interesting.